we are going to be discussing why it is important to study Greek and Latin roots. First of all, it increases our spelling, our vocabulary, and our reading comprehension so we can better understand what people are saying and what we are reading about and being able to communicate with others. A quick comic on knowing the difference between decapitated and decaffeinated. Very important. All right, so what are Greek and Latin roots? Uh, English, like many other languages, got many of its own, um, many of its words from ancient Greek and Latin. Roots and affixes act as a puzzle to create words. So each of those little pieces have meaning and you connect them together and you get uh, new meanings and new words. 60% of uh, English words are from Latin or Greek origin. That's a huge number, right? And then if you plan on going into science, technology, the medical field, 90% of the words used in those areas are with Greek and Latin origins. All right, so why do we study them? If we know what the roots and affixes mean in Greek or Latin, we can put the puzzle together and figure out the meaning of the words. So you can think of it just like the little choo-choo train. You've got the prefix, the base or the root in the middle, and then the suffix at the end. And having those pieces together then create new words or ones maybe that we haven't seen before. So a root is a piece of word um, that has meaning. It's the most basic part of a word. The root can be in the front, middle, or end of a word. Uh, many words in the English language are based on Greek and Latin roots. For example, the Latin root ject means throw. So project means to throw forward, where reject would mean to throw it back. Affixes are pieces added to the root to create a new word. So there's two kinds. There's the prefix, which goes in the beginning, and the suffix that goes at the end. But the overall name of them is affixes. So if you could look at the word unreadable. Un, meaning not, read is the root, and able can be done. So unable to be read would be the meaning of unreadable. You already know that prefixes are groups of letters that come before a word that change the meaning of the word, and that suffixes are a group of letters that come after a word to also change the meaning of a word. In this video, we will look at the main words, or the root words, that prefixes and suffixes are often attached to. It's important to know word origins, or roots, to help you spell, read, and understand the meaning of words. When you know the Latin, Greek, or French meaning of the word, you will better understand the English meaning. Be careful, though. Not all root words are words by themselves. Many need prefixes or suffixes to be actual words. Let's look at some examples of root words. The root word by is Greek for two or twice. Can you figure out how to read these words then? Can you also figure out their meaning? Since cycle means to pedal in a circular motion, and by means two, this word means two pedals in circular motions. We know it as this object. We ride with two pedals, and also two wheels, called a bicycle. Since focal has to do with focusing the eyes, and bi means two, this word means two lenses used to focus with the eyes, or bifocals. Let's look at another root word. Inter is the Latin root, meaning between or among. The word international then means between nations. The word internet means between networks. Fun, isn't it? Ist is a Latin root word, 
specifically from the French, that means someone who does. In English, we have dropped the final e in this root. A person who styles is called a stylist. A person who works with flowers is called a florist. A person who plays the guitar is called a guitarist. What would a person who cares for teeth be called? Yes, a dentist. Dent means teeth in French as well. Do you see how knowing the meaning of root words helps you understand the meaning of the whole word? It will also help you spell the words when you want to write them. Here are some common root words. Can you guess their meanings? It would be impossible to memorize all the root words in the English language, but you can practice some of the more popular roots in our fun games. I want to guess on how you pronounce the word in red. What do you think it means? Willing to take a guess? take a look at it this way. We're going to work on a vocabulary strategy that's called uh, inside outside. So step one is to look inside the word for known word parts, prefixes, roots, or combining forms and suffixes. So when you see it broken down into each segment, do you think now you would be able to read it a little bit more easily? Give yourself a second to try. Let's see how well we did. Numino ultra microscopic silico volcano coniosis. Numino ultra microscopic silico volcano coniosis. How close were you? All right, so first part of the strategy inside. Look inside the word for word parts. Any prefixes, roots, or suffixes that you recognize. The next part of the strategy is to use an analogy. So you might say something like this. You know, I don't know this word, but I know pneumonia has to do with the lungs, and volcano has something to do with heat, so maybe this word has something to do with lungs and heat. So you're going to look at each of the word parts that you noticed and think about, okay, have you seen any other words that have that word in it and what does it mean? Like micro, you might know that means small. The third part of the strategy is to look on the outside. That would mean using the context clues or visuals that are offered. You're not really going to see this word just standing off by itself. You're going to have context clues within the sentence. The coal miners coughing and wheezing suffered from pneumo, new mono ultra microscopic volcano coniosis. Uh, do you have a better idea of what it means than using uh, what we know about the word parts and then the sentence about coal miners coughing and wheezing. So I'd wonder, okay, what do I know about coal mining or mining in general? And if the person suffers from this and they're coughing and wheezing, can I put that together with the prefixes that I noticed? If I break down just uh, the different word parts, it would be lung-related, beyond, small-looking, sand-like, volcano dust condition definition. It's a lung disease caused by the inhalation of very fine silicate or quartz dust causing inflammation of the lungs. The sharp particles lacerate or cut the lining of the lungs causing the victim to leak air from their lungs while simultaneously or at the same time bleeding into their lung cavity. So how close were you with your guess of what that word meant. Okay, so if we look back at the very beginning where I asked you, were you uh, able to pronounce the word or do you have any idea what it means? 
after we had used the inside out vocabulary strategy, looking at the word parts, the pieces, and looking about what we already know about those pieces. And then we use the context clues on the outside helps us to get to the meaning. So if we can spend our time looking at what those different word pieces mean, then we can take words like this and put them together and have a better understanding at guessing their meaning. So obviously we're not going to see words like this. We're not going to encounter them, but we are going to encounter many words that we have never seen before and being able to use what we know about the roots and uh, context clues, we would have an advantage of understanding the words in our stories or the words that people are using.